Hi, we are Dimehead, and today we would like to introduce you to the NAM player. NAM stands for Neural Amp Modeler. It is an open standard for modeling amplifiers and, in our humble opinion, the best technology currently available. We have implemented this technology in a compact and portable device. Before we dive into the user interface, let's look at the connectors at the back. From left to right, you have the input jack coming from your guitar or pedal board. A line out if you want to connect to an external amplifier. A headphone output. An XLR output for your studio monitor, mixer, or as an output to your PA. A MIDI input for remote control. A USB host to upload models and update the firmware. And finally, a standard 9 volt center negative power jack requiring less than 500 milliamps. The user interface is clean and as simple as it gets for the task at hand. You have four foot switches at the bottom, each selecting one out of 128 available presets. You can control the gain right at the input of the signal chain. The integrated equalizer allows you to fine tune your sound with the bass, mids, and treble potentiometers. The volume knob sets the output volume after the equalizer. With the room control, you can set a variety of parameters, depending on your settings. In this case, it controls the mix of the spring reverb. All these potentiometer values are stored individually for each preset, except for the headphone volume. On the screen, you see the currently selected preset at the very top, with its number and name. Below is the complete signal flow, starting with the noise gate. You navigate through the settings by rotating the encoder. The currently active element is highlighted. A press on the encoder knob triggers the selected option. Options which have a dedicated knob cannot be controlled with the encoder, like the input gain. Next is the NAM model, the core of the whole device, allowing you to replicate any amplifier you like. Clicking it opens the file browser where you can select the model. The factory folder contains our preloaded models, which cannot be deleted. Your own imported models are located in the users folder. They can be deleted with a long press. The model is followed by the equalizer and the volume, also controlled by dedicated knobs. Opening the rooms menu lets you choose between no effect, a convolution reverb, and a delay. More effects will follow. You can change the mix of the effect. The small knob symbol also indicates that this parameter is currently driven by the room knob. Selecting Reverb File opens the file dialog to select a different reverb. The reverb file can have a length of up to 60 seconds. The delay effect has a few more parameters. You can select the one that should be controlled by the room knob with a long press of the encoder. Finally, back in the overview, you can select a speaker impulse response. On the very left and right of the screen are input and output level meters. If you modified the current preset, a save symbol will appear at the top right. Select it to save the changes. If you want to discard the changes, just switch to a different preset. The LED symbol allows you to change the LED color of the preset. You can also switch the preset with the rotary encoder. Long pressing at this position allows you to edit the preset name. Another long press gets you back to the preset number. To import new models, impulse responses, or reverbs, copy the files onto a USB drive and insert it into the USB port. The file browser will open, Select the files you would like to import. For WAV files, the NAM player will ask you 
if it is a speaker impulse response or a reverb. The default selection is a guess based on the length of the file. After that, you can correct the gain of the file, where the system will also give you an educated guess by analyzing the input file. We have now covered all the settings relevant to an individual preset. By opening the settings menu, you get access to the global settings and a few other things. The impulse response on line out option defines if the speaker impulse response should be applied to the line out. It is always enabled for the XLR and headphone outputs. The noise gate threshold is defined globally and should be set according to your setup. Setting the LCD and LED brightness might be helpful in different environments. You can also set the MIDI channel used for the MIDI input. There are two foot switch modes. The 1 to 4 mode, where the four foot switches select the presets 1 to 4, or the bank mode, where you rotate through 64 banks with the two right foot switches and select either of the two presets in the bank with the two left foot switches. On the second page, you find more features, like loading the factory settings, which will delete all your models, and load the default settings and presets. So be careful with this. You can also export and import all of your profiles, settings, and models to have a complete backup or to duplicate the settings to a different device. We hope you enjoyed our short introduction of the NAM player and love our interface choices. Feel free to make suggestions for improvements and new software features down below.